I'm Liz Merrick. I make cakes. And I am on my way to, <laughs> I'm on my way to Austin. Hi, Devin. Um, Austin, that takes the cake sugar art show and cake competition. It's a really long name. That's my cake. It's big. Eh. You think it you think it's big enough? Hmm? And this, my friend, <laughs> is why we make them out of styrofoam for show cakes. It is a dummy cake. Um it is a 24 by 24 inch cake and 36 inches tall. You cannot see it because if the judges happen to be in this periscope and they see um, my cake, then I would be disqualified. So I have to keep it a secret. <laughs> Hi, Avalon. I weighed it. It weighs 46 pounds. So it's actually not that heavy. But I can't really like, I can't see, I can lift it but it's very awkward. So, um, Shelly is coming over early, early in the morning and um, she's gonna help me take this to, to the shipping company. So, uh, no, I'm not bringing it back. <laughs> Hi guys. It is a show cake. So this is, um, this is only for display. Yes, I will periscope at the event, I promise. <laughs> Tons of time. Uh, it is in pieces, so um, I have all of the delicate pieces like flowers or little modeled pieces or anything delicate like that. It goes in my carry-on. Oh, <laughs> it's, <laughs> this is a, uh, um, a uh, roller derby shirt, so sorry, I'm not like a, a Satan worshiper. <laughs> Um, yes, so I know it seems disappointing that the cake is not real, but that's just how it is. You have to use fake cakes, otherwise nobody would be able to compete because a cake cannot sit out at room temperature for five days and make it. So everything on the outside is real, but um, it's, always, uh, it's always not real cake. Um, there are some cake shows where they use real cake for sculpted things, but you have to do like, you have to over bake the cake, you have to um, use like chocolate, like all things that you wouldn't, you wouldn't even use in real cake. So it doesn't even really matter, you know? Like, it's not for eating is the point. It's, it's a competition for art, you know? I always think it's interesting how stressed out people get when they're like, you're wasting so much cake. It's like, it's not real cake, <laughs> you know? Um, so I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about how I'm shipping this cake this time. So this is the biggest cake I've ever traveled with. It's three feet tall and it's um, 24 inches wide. And uh, it's too big to check on the flame. Um, I could do oversized baggage, but the problem is, is I can't really carry it, you know? It's like all the other cakes I've ever, uh, you know, brought with me, I can carry like the box and stuff, but I can't really carry this. Uh, so um, I went ahead and looked into doing freight shipping, which is basically you put the box on the plane that's right behind you. And Vivian Pham, she shipped her cake through freight through, it's called Southwest Cargo. And uh, she told me about it and I looked into it and you know, it's not too expensive. It's bare. I don't even think it's more expensive than actually checking the box on the plane because you end up paying so much for the overweight fee and the oversized fee. It's like a hundred dollars, right? So I, it's like a really weird shadow on my mouth. It makes me look like I have a beard. <laughs> so, um, uh, anyways, sorry. Uh, so, so anyways, the Southwest Cargo is, um, you can go on to um, their website and you can look you know look into it but basically you just pack the cake in a box like so it has to have a minimum of eight hand holds so I put two rope hand holds on each side of the box so that way if two guys need to pick it up you can have one on each side 
or you could have four, like if this was super heavy, then, you know, but it's not, it's only 40 pounds. And, um, and then they put it on the plane behind you, and then when you get to the Austin airport, it's there waiting for you. So I don't have to worry about delivering it to a hotel. I don't have to worry about, um, like you could ship a cake this way, like in the mail, but it's a little difficult with the whole, like, where do you ship it to? Where is it waiting? You know, that kind of stuff. I never knew this either. Um, the freight, it, it's like $50 for the first 50 pounds. And then I think, I think it's a little bit extra. It's not that much. Um, the way that I packed it is the way that I always pack the cakes. So, you know, there's the baseboard. There's a baseboard here, and then there's the cake in the center, and then there's another base at the top, and everything is sandwiched together. You saran wrap it all together, and then you screw it to the bottom of the box, and um, you could t technically screw it to the top of the box, too, if you wanted it to be extra secure. And then I put styrofoam spacers on the side of the top and the bottom boards so that it doesn't shake around. So I'm going to do that scary thing that you guys love. Ah! <laughs> so because this cake is sandwiched between two boards and it's, you know, compressed together. It doesn't fall around. It doesn't fall in the box. So <laughs> I know it seems really scary. <laughs> so you see, if I shake this, there's no noise. That's because everything is sandwiched in there and it's very secure. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always really hard to explain, but basically, you know, it's like, if this was my cake, and it's in three pieces, right? If this is the cake, and it's stacked like this, yeah, I'm competing. I am definitely competing. It took me a few weeks. I have done a tutorial on how to ship a cake. So if you go onto YouTube and uh, search for how to ship a competition cake, uh, artisan cake company then it'll come up but it was a small cake but so this is just I'm just doing this periscope just for the sake of doing it to let you guys know um, another option besides checking it on the plane is shipping by cargo if you have a really big cake like I do so anyway so you have a cake that's like this and if you don't have anything like a support or anything going through the center as soon as it gets tipped to the side it falls apart right but let me get something. If when you make your cake, if you make your cake and you have your baseboard and you put a center um, PVC pipe all the way through the center and then you attach the PVC pipe to a, a cake board, like this, like a wooden cake board, then your cake is secured together and it has, it's secured to the cake board and then you put another cake board on top, right? And then you saran wrap the top board to the bottom board so that it's sandwiched together and acts as compression so that when it goes on its side, it doesn't fall apart because it's compressed this way, there's something running through the center so it can go any which way and it doesn't fall apart. So that's how that's how I do it. And then of course the box has to be exactly the same height as the cake so that it stays compressed or you put um, styrofoam spacers through, uh, you know, between the cake and the cake board. You secure the pipe to the board um, with a PVC flange. So there's a PVC flange that screws to the cake board. Um, let me get one real quick. Hi, Lisa. So this is a, a wooden, you know, this pretend this is your cake board and judges don't care what you use for essential support. They don't care what you use for your support at all. 
Um, so you have your metal flange, your PVC in the center, and then you stack all of your cakes over that. Even if it was a wedding cake, you would stack it all onto the PVC. You would glue all your tiers together. And then when you go to ship it, you take your other board and put it on top. Somebody just asked if the boards damage your fondant. Well, your fondant theoretically is very dry because you've been working on your competition cake for a while. So it's not like a buttercream cake, you know, it, or, or it's not like a fresh cake where it's really soft. It's, it's a thin layer of fondant over the top of styrofoam that's been drying for like a week. So it's not going to damage it or anything like that. You could always pat it with a little bit of soft foam and then put your box there. But really the thing that holds your cake from tipping is the central support. So like it can go anything like that. Yes, I do drill a hole through the dummies. Um, I have actually tra uh, traveled with a real cake um, competition cake. So National Capital last year, um, I did a Mermaid Queen and that was real cake. And uh, the way that I made the cake not fall apart is that I overbaked the cake and made it very dry. <laughs> so it's like carving rock basically. And then I put ganache in between the layers, ganache the whole outside, and then covered the whole thing in modeling chocolate. And so it's very, it's very cold in the cargo part of a plane. So it's basically like being in a fridge as it travels. So that's really lucky because then that just makes it even more secure while it's traveling. But the only time you need to use cake is when it's a sculpted cake and that particular show requires it to be real cake. But Austin is the best cake show because they have a category that is for show cakes and they allow you to use Rice Krispie Treats or styrofoam as long as you show in process photos of what the structure is and how it could be supported as real cake. So that's awesome because it's a lot, lot, lot easier to transport and you can go bigger, you can be, do more impressive things and you don't have to worry about like how am I going to refrigerate this gigantic show cake while I'm working on it, right?